Thank you, Miss Millie, Brother Steve, and Brother Perry. What a crowd we've got tonight. Yeah. All right, grab your Bibles, turn with me to the book of John. John chapter 21. We were there Wednesday night. I wanted to go back there tonight. John chapter 21, starting in verse 1. John 21, 1. And when you're there, say, Amen. Amen. All right, well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Gracious Father, again, we want to thank you for tonight. We thank you, Father, for allowing us to be here. We thank you for the body of Christ. We thank you for the opportunity to sing praises to your holy name. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the salvation you offer us through Jesus Christ that we've received. And God, that you still offer to the entire world if they will just repent and believe. God, we pray for those that don't know you. Father, we pray that you'll be with us tonight. Help us, God, as we read from your word to receive it into our hearts and Make application to our lives with it. And again, we ask for just a blessing upon those that we mentioned earlier. That you might be with them in their time of need. And we give this time to you. And we ask you to bless it in Christ's name. Amen. John 21.1. Bible says, After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples at the Sea of Tiberias. And in this way, he showed himself. Simon Peter, Thomas called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan, Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I am going fishing. They said to him, we are going with you also. They went out and immediately got into the boat, and that night they caught nothing. But when the morning had now come, Jesus stood on the shore, that the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Then Jesus said to them, Children, have you any food? They answered him, No. And he said to them, Cast the net on the right side of the boat, and you'll find some. So they cast, and now they were not able to draw it in because of the multitude of fish. Therefore that disciple whom Jesus loved said to Peter, It is the Lord. Now when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he had removed it, and plunged into the sea. But the other disciples came in the little boat, for they were not far from land, but about two hundred cubits, dragging the net with fish. And as soon as they had come to land, they saw a fire of coals there, and fish laid on it, and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish which you have just caught. Simon Peter went up and dragged the net to land full of large fish, 153. And although they were, not, they were so many, the net was not broken. Jesus said to them, Come, eat breakfast. Yet none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? Knowing that it was the Lord. Jesus then came and took the bread and gave it to them, and likewise the fish. This is now the third time that Jesus showed himself to his disciples after he was raised from the dead. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Feed my lambs. He said to him again a second time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. 
Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, you girded yourself and walked where you wished. But when you were old, you'll stretch out your hands, and another will gird you and carry you where you do not wish. Then he spoke, signifying by what death he would glorify God. And when he had spoken this, he said to him, Follow me. Then Peter, turning around, saw the disciple whom Jesus loved following, who also had leaned on his breast at the supper, and said, Lord, who is the one who betrays you? Peter, seeing him, said to Jesus, But Lord, what about this man? Jesus said to him, If I will that he remain till, till, that he remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Then this saying went out among the brethren that this disciple would not die. Yet Jesus did not say to him that he would not die, but if I will that he remain till I come, what is that to you? This is the disciple who testifies of these things and wrote these things, and we know that his testimony is true. And there are also many other things that Jesus did, which if they were written one by one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that would be written. Amen. God bless the reading of his word. Wednesday night we were, we were in this particular passage of scripture and, and we talked about how we live our lives in faithfulness to the Lord. It, it is really bound up in, in these words that the Lord Jesus told Peter, you follow me, you follow me. And we're going to talk a little bit about following Jesus and how do you follow him? How do we follow him? We talked about that too. How do we follow him? Out of obligation? Do we follow him out of fear? Do we follow him out of terror? Do we follow him? I mean, just how, why do we follow him? How do we follow him? Let me, let me just define to you, as we did on Wednesday night, what that word follower means. It means to be a follower, to be a companion, is what it means. The Greek word is akaluthos. The A expresses union or likeness. And kaluthos expressing a way. So when you put it together, this is what it means. It means one going the same way is what it means. One going the same way. For to us it would be, are we going the same way as Jesus? Are we going after Jesus? Are we following after Him? If you'll turn with me to the book of Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, let me share with you a little bit about what Paul says to the church at uh, Philippi in chapter 2, uh, starting in uh, verse 5. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 and following. Listen to what, what Paul writes to the Philippians. And, and it pertains to us just as it did to the church at Philippi. He said, let this mind be in you, which was in also in Christ Jesus. who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men. And being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore God also has highly exalted him and given him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of those in heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. And Paul doesn't stop there. He goes on to verse 12 and he says, Therefore, that is, therefore means because of what he said before, my beloved, and that's us, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for what? His good pleasure. Isn't that right? For His good pleasure. Going the same way as Jesus. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. It's a life that walks along the way with Jesus, hand in hand with the Lord in humility in power and strength of the Father. You know, that in faithfulness, Jesus said He always did the will of His Father, didn't He? There never was a time when Jesus did not do the will of His Father. 
when he was in the garden of Gethsemane, he said, Father, if it be your will, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but yours be. Or if it's possible, let this cup pass from me. But not my will, but your will, Lord. Your will. If Jesus said to Peter, you follow me. You know, we talked about sometimes how we like to compare ourselves to other people in adversity or in blessing. Isn't that right? We talked about how Jesus had just spoken to Peter. And he told Peter what he expected of him. Expected of him, right? If what? Listen to this. If he loved him. I heard a guy talking one time and he said, you know, if the Lord looked at one of his and said, uh, do you love me? And somebody said, no, Lord, I, I really don't love you. The Lord would say, well, then just forget it. Love. It's the fuse that, that lights the powder is what it is. It's, it, it's not because of some sort of a... Uh, our relationship with the Lord, as we said before time and time again, it's, it's, it's a relationship of love is what it is. It's, love is what prompts us to follow Jesus, to follow after Jesus. Why Jesus asked Peter, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? What if Peter would have said, no, Lord, you know, I don't love you. Well, he didn't love him like Jesus, you know, not the agapeo love. It was, it was more, like, more like the admiring kind of love, right? The phileo love. Matter of fact, it's defined in the last love, the last word used for love. The last one Jesus said, do you phileo me? Peter said, yeah, Lord, you know all things. You know that I phileo you, not agapeo you, but phileo you. But Peter would grow in that love for the Lord, you see. Peter was the one who, who never cowered down, never backed down. He's the only disciple that walked on water. Isn't that amazing? Always stood up, cut off a man's ear, all of these things. If you're going to die, I'm going to die with you. That was the way it was. But yet when the darkness had come over the land and Jesus was crucified, you know what happened to Peter? We all know the story of what happened to Peter. When he denied him three times, what do you think happened to Peter? You know, he wasn't a Judas. You know, Judas. Judas repented of himself. You know, Judas was sorry for what he did for himself. Not Peter. When Peter denied the Lord, Peter's heart was broken. And his heart was for God. His heart was for the Lord. He just couldn't bear up under the pressure of it all, see. He went out and he wept bitterly. Why? Friends, when you betray somebody you love. I remember one time talking to a guy. You know, he and his wife were going through a divorce. And, you know, he was always one of those that was stood tall and firm for his relationship with his wife and his family. But, you know, some... Somebody came into play. Another woman came into the, in between the marriage relationship. He faltered. He fell. Christian. He was a Christian. You know, I was talking to him and he said, I'm not the man that I thought I was. I don't think any of us are the person we think we are or, we, or that we ought to be, Right? We could all stumble at any time. The Bible tells us that, correct? Of course. But Christ says, follow me. Follow after me. We can compare ourselves with other people. You know, that's what, that's what, that's what Peter did. The Lord just told him, you know, he just told him, Peter, do you love me? He said, Peter, this is how you're going to die. You're not going to want to die the way that you're going to die, but you're going to. You're going to a place you, 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 you're not going to wish to go, but... You're going to go. Legend has it that uh, Peter knew when it was time for him to be crucified, he started to, to walk outside of the city. And it is said that he met the Lord Jesus Christ on the way. And as the Lord passed him, Peter said, where are you going, Lord? The Lord said, I'm going to be crucified all over again. Peter took that as a message to himself. Read Fox's Book of Martyrs. 
And he turned around and he went back into the city and Peter dared not even be crucified up on the cross head up, but he was crucified upside down because he felt he was not worthy to be crucified in the same manner that his Lord was crucified. It's amazing, isn't it? Oh, Peter, follow me, Peter. Follow me. But what about this man, Lord? What about, what about John? Yeah. Same words spoken to Peter, the ones that also spoken to us. We don't, shouldn't compare ourselves with each other in adversity or in blessing. Lord, what about this man? What's going to happen to him? What's he going to do? It's not important what Christ does for them and their walk with Him and their ministry for Him. Jesus said, if I will that He remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Listen, you go the same way that I'm going. You go my way. Well, how are you going to follow Him? How am I going to follow Him? Out, out of an obligation? Out of an oath? Or is it going to be out of love, right? Love holds the key. It's love for God and love for others. It's why we as Christians do what we do and follow Jesus. If it were not for love, if it were not for love, there would be no salvation for mankind. If it were not for, for love, for God loving this world, Jesus Christ would not have come to go to the cross for us. God could have just started all over again. He could have destroyed everybody. He could have destroyed every human when he brought the flood instead of saving Noah and his family. Right? Of course. But he didn't do it. One writer said Peter was just told that he himself would become a martyr for the Lord and that may have prompted him to ask the question, but Lord, what about this man? Perhaps maybe he had a deep concern for John's future since he was his friend, but Jesus' answer signified that Peter's primary concern must not be John, but his continued devotion to the Lord and to the Lord's service. They go on to say service to Christ must be his all-consuming passion, and nothing must distract from it, and it also must be ours. Our service to Him and exercising our spiritual gifts is something that we give to the Lord and we serve the Lord with gladness with. Not in grumbling and complaining. Although sometimes we grumble and complain. The Bible says to serve the Lord with what? Gladness. It's like in giving, right? The Lord loves the what? Cheerful giver. What if you're giving like this? I'd say don't give it all. If you can't, you can't give cheerfully, you don't you need to give it. The Lord loves a cheerful giver. You know, some, some, too often we ask the what ifs, don't we, and the what abouts, rather than the question, Lord, what would you have me do? You know, during the vacation Bible school, Michelle was sharing with the kids, Isaiah chapter 6, where where... Where, the, where Isaiah had seen the Lord in the temple high and lifted up. He'd seen the Lord. And, and the, Lord's, the Lord's train, the train of His robe, filled the temple, the Bible says. And the cherubim began to fly, you know, and, then, and they covered their faces, and they covered their feet, and they flew with two wings, and they began to say, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is full of His glory. Right? And oh, Isaiah was there. What did Isaiah say? He said... Oh my goodness, woe is me. I am undone. I'm a man of unclean lips and I live amongst a bunch of people with unclean lips. And the angel went and he took some tongs and he took a coal off the altar and he put it to Isaiah's lips. And what happened to Isaiah? Well, this is what happened. He was purged. And as he was purged, he heard a voice from heaven said, saying, uh, Who will go for us? Whom shall we send? Who will go for us? 
Do you know what Isaiah said? He said, here am I. <laughs> Send me. Here am I. Isn't that amazing? Send me, he said. How awesome that is. He didn't say, first, let me go bury my father. <laughs> he didn't say, well, let me take care of business at home first. Let me spend some more time here or there. He didn't say that. He said, here am I. Send me, which means here am I. I am available right here. Send me, Lord. And God used Isaiah mightily when the great D.L. Moody heard a preacher say the words, the world is yet to see what God would do with a man who was 100% totally dedicated to him. D.L. Moody said in his heart, I hope to be that man. It was D.L. Moody's Sunday school teacher who came to D.L. Moody as working in his uncle's shoe store. And he paced about the front of the building, just going back and forth, nervous as all get out, wondering how in the world he was going to be able to testify to D.L. Moody. Praying the Lord would give him the courage to be able to speak to him what it was uh, that he needed to say to D.L. Well, when he went in there, he, the words that he knew to say to D.L. Moody was this. He said, D.L., Jesus Christ loves you and his desires for you to love him in return what he said. You know what D.L. Moody said? I'll do it. <laughs> Out of love. Christ loves you. And his desire is that we love him in return. And in loving him, what does he say? Well, he says this, follow me. Go the same way that I'm going. Are you willing to go the same way as Jesus? To follow him? No matter where he might lead. And D.L. Moody became a man that God used, one of the greatest evangelists of all time. A man that God used to change minds and hearts for the glory of Almighty God. Not an educated man. He didn't have a degree or anything like that. I don't even think he finished the third grade. But God used him mightily. Very, very mightily. Isn't it amazing how God takes the simple things and the ignorant things of this world in order to shame the wise? It is, isn't it? Blows my mind. I'm sure it blows yours too. You know, God took 12 ordinary men and He changed the world. I think it was John Wesley that, that said this. He said, give me a hundred men who hate nothing but sin and love nothing but righteousness and I'll turn the world upside down for Jesus Christ. That's what He said. It's amazing, isn't it? Follow me, Jesus said. You ever wonder what it would be like if more Christians followed Jesus? Professing Christians follow Jesus. What if we followed him like he wants us to follow him? You know, these men, they, they took the, the word of God seriously. When he said to Peter, Peter, or Simon, son of Jonah, do you love me? That's the question. Do you love me? Do you love him? Do I love him? Do I love him like I should love him? Do I follow after him like I should follow after him? The Lord said, feed my lambs, tend my sheep, feed my sheep. Psalm 100 says this, make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before His presence with singing. Know that the Lord, He is God. It is He who has made us and not we ourselves. We are His people and the sheep of His pasture. Enter into His gates with thanksgiving and into His courts with praise. Be thankful to Him and bless His name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and His truth endures to all generations. Not just one, not just two, but to every generation His love endures. The Lord will tell Joshua in Joshua 1.9, this is one of my favorites, have I not commanded you be strong and of good courage? Do not be afraid, do not be dismayed. Why? Sometimes you have to ask the question, why? Well, this is why, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. It's what the Lord says. 
Do not be afraid nor be dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. And if he says, follow me, and friend, your desire because you love him is to follow him, then I guarantee you he will give you the ability to follow him. He'll give you the strength. Even if you're hanging on by a thread. He will. In the very last chapter of the book of Joshua, chapter 24, verses 14 through 15. We all know this one. Joshua would say to the people of Israel, listen to this. Now therefore fear the Lord, serve Him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the rivers and in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose for yourselves this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Jesus said, follow me. Where is your focus and my focus? Is it on following Jesus? Where is your house? Where is your heart? Is it fixed on following Jesus? Is it focused on other things? Is it focused on other people? But Lord, what about this man? Don't compare yourself with somebody else. It is your walk with Jesus. You're serving Christ. You're following Him. Your ministry for Him. Uh, your testimony of Him and His goodness and His grace. Uh, share what Christ has done for you. Is your life focused upon the words of the Lord Jesus? If I will that He remain till I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Someone has said this. To follow Christ is more than just a willingness to follow Him. But we must follow after Him with the same love and compassion for people that He had. We must follow him with the same love and compassion for people that he had. In this day and age, we, we walk in the flesh, I think, a lot more than we walk in the spirit. A lot of times. I know I do sometimes. I walk with the same love and compassion for people that Jesus. Had with the same mind that he has. That should be our consuming passion. Following Christ Jesus. Serving him with gladness. Saying, Lord, what would you have me do? What would you have me do? Here I am. Send me. I don't know what... what your outcome with the Lord is going to be. You don't know what my outcome with the Lord is, is going to be in the light of serving Him. We don't know. And what His will is for us as far as that service, but I know one thing that He wants to tell us is what He's told Simon Peter. He says, You follow me. You follow me. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank You for Your Word. We thank you, Father, that you've provided it to us. And God, I like what somebody said, Lord. They're not, it's not suggestions. <laughs> when somebody had talked about the Ten Commandments. They said it's not the Ten Suggestions. It's not. They're not. But Father, we as Christians, we know that our service to you is, our obligation to you is out of love for you. That's what it is. Nothing else. 
Our love for you and our love for you should be exhibited in our lives and through us toward other people. Help us, Lord, to have that mind in us that was in you, that we might humble ourselves. Take up our cross daily, as your word says, daily, and follow after you. And Father, as we leave here tonight, I pray, dear God, that you will help us, Father, to be mindful of your words to us in our relationship with you. Keep us strong, keep us safe, and in your will, help us, Father, to walk in a way worthy of our high calling in Christ Jesus, and we ask it in his name. Amen. I want to thank you.